Hello, hello, hello. Good morning and welcome to the Shoe Snob Unboxing Series videos, One Take Wonders. Here we are back with something new, something different. Uh, and yeah, sorry for the long delay since the last video, but uh, it's been busy and I've been acquiring a few things so I can get a few videos out here in the coming weeks. Um, anyway, let's jump right into this. So today I have a new pair of economic line shoes from a Canadian company who mainly sells clothing but also has a shoe range and their name is Spire and McKay. Yeah, quick little glance there. Uh, so Spire and McKay, I, I don't know how to describe them, but they're like a smart uh, menswear company that specializes in nice jackets and suits and shirts and trousers and kind of a blend between Italian uh, flair um, and classic. So it's very mixed in terms of their clothing style. Mm -hmm. And they have a small shoe range that, uh, medium sized shoe range actually, that's kind of a blend between what you might think of as a, well, the shoes are welted. So a lot of times that's associated with the British ideology of construction um, with a little bit more kind of uh, Italian styled lasts and, and, and kind of burnished uh, look. So anyway, they are a new uh, contributor to the Shoe Snob blog and you know, as they have a shoe collection and as this is a shoe blog, I thought, hey, let's take a look at them and see what they have to offer. All right, let's open up here. So packaging, well, the box is very basic. Uh, basic cardboard, not uh, not a whole lot to it. Sticker with the sizing. Again, I stick to my usual UK six and a half, US seven and a half, and which normally translates to an EU forty and a half, and that's what they have here. Uh, packaging is quite simple, just nice tissue paper. They do have a piece of paper that thanks you for your order and also explains a bit about the return policy, which is always good because I know sometimes that can be confusing. Um, I, uh, sorry, I'm just giving a quick read in case there's any, and just seeing if there's any information that is you know, super important to, uh, to mention for all of you guys but it's kind of the standard stuff so i'll let you guys read it if you order a pair all right what else comes so here's the shoe just trying to see what else comes in the box it's like a nice little shoehorn little plastic branded shoehorn uh, which is nice about six inches and we got a single shoe bag in a sort of linen like material but felt lined interesting so one bag for two shoes uh one large bag that fits two shoes all right so let's get these things out of here all right so what i ordered was a pair of the whole cut oxfords in this kind of i don't know like a mocha brown with some very subtle burnishing it's actually quite a nice shade and the burnishing is so subtle that I find it to be quite appealing because it's not overbearing yet it's not a flat brown which sometimes can be somewhat unattractive. Now full uh, transparency here this was the second pair of shoes that I tried from them. The first one I, uh, I wasn't actually crazy about in terms of fit and style and I didn't to be honest, I didn't really want to talk about it. I wanted something a little bit uh, more uh, refined. And I got to talking with the creative director and he said, you know, they're, they're new to shoes. And he told me that the, the first shoe I, I had was just like generic factory stuff. Um, and so he didn't have a ton of creative control there. But with this pair of shoes, it was a shoe that they built their own last and they had more kind of freedom with the leathers as opposed to just taking whatever the factory had on offer. So uh, definitely a step up from the first shoe I got. 
and definitely worth discussing with all of you for guys that are looking for kind of, you know, to get into the smart shoe world, don't want to spend a ton of money, maybe buying clothes with Spire McCain, want to do a one-stop shop. So first things first, let me just say the shoes start at $249 retail. Please remember in shoes, you always get what you pay for. Don't buy $250 shoes and expect $1,000 quality. You are setting yourself up for disappointment immediately. Um, You're never gonna get a shoe that costs sub 500. That's as good as the honest $1,000 shoes. What I mean by honest is you're not paying for their name. You're not paying for some fashion idea. You're not paying for a made in Italy stamp. You're not paying for something other than the quality of the shoe. So $250, so let me tell you what you're getting for those $250. So in talking with the creative director, again, these are Goodyear welted and they're actually made in Portugal. The leather is Weinheimer. So this model has Weinheimer black and Weinheimer brown. Um, you can tell that the leather is of decent grade. It's porous, so you can see it doesn't look uh, corrected. Um, you know, and you can see little, little small, uh, not discrepancies, but little things that show you this is a, you know, a real caskin. Um, you're not going to be getting first grade, hand grade Crocker and Jones type leather in a $250 shoe. But looking at this, you know, there's nothing, uh, flawed about it that would make it not worth what you're paying for. You know, there's some natural some natural things in the leather that are expected at this price point because again at this price point the maker is going to cut all the leather and when you cut all the leather that means you're going to have the natural variations of the leather so 250 dollars when you compare that to you know alan neverman's or Meerman, you're getting in kind of the middle of the road here in Meerman's 195 alan neverman's you know three plus um and I'm not gonna lie, from what I see of Allen Edmonds, I, I would take these over that, especially at that price. Um, and so yeah, again, they're good you're welted. Now on the sole, they tell you that, and they also tell you bench made, which I like. They're being honest, they're not saying handmade, they're saying bench made, and this is a bench made welted shoe. And what bench made means is that it's an entry level welted shoe that is put together I mean, tr traditionally at a bench with a, with a shoemaker, but that term now is more used to denote kind of an entry-level welted shoe. You don't have all the bells and whistles that you get in a hand-grade shoe. So you have open channel soles, you have straight waist. Um, it looks like in reality on the, on the waist that they put a tiny little Kind of curvature there but it's not really it's straight on the bottom and it's a little bit angled on the top but for all intensive purposes it's a straight waist um that is essentially what a bench grade shoe is so 250 bucks weinheimer leather bench grade welted uh portuguese made i can see the sole is of you know kind of a basic quality uh i can't speak to how long it'll wear because I haven't worn these yet. I can say that the fit of this last that they created is quite a, a pretty good standard fit. The other shoes that are not on this last were humongous in my size. Um, they just didn't, they fit lengthwise, but they were just very big in the forefoot and voluminous. It wasn't like a, a tailored last, you know, they, they, it's kind of those, let's try to fit everybody's feet type last. So I like this last, it's got a beautiful shape. It, it has a, a good fit, more standard traditional dress fit. Uh, the color's great. Haven't tried to shine the shoes yet, but uh, I think at 250, 250 bucks, you're getting a solid shoe. Um, again, don't have experience yet with how they wear. The lining looks good. Uh, lining quality looks pretty nice. Um, yeah, the beauty of Portugal is they still have fair prices. They can make good shoes and they don't have huge markups. They haven't, they haven't gotten to that level yet. They're not Italian that you pay for the idea that something is made in Italy, which is, you know, an idea you don't really need to pay for. It's either good quality or it's not. So 
Uh, the beauty of Portuguese shoes is you still get relatively good pricing. Um, and I think at 250, you're getting a solid shoe. Uh, sub 300 in reality, as long as the shoe is, is attractive in its shape, decent in its fit, and has good leather, you can't complain, you know. Really good shoes normally start after 300, closer to 400. Um, but at the basic entry level, again, as long as you've got, you know, relatively flawless uh, make, um, an elegant shape, and the shoe fits you well, uh, I think you get a good bang for your buck. Again, time will tell with how they wear. Uh, obviously, you know, if they last you a long time, the longer they last, the more value you're getting. But I think, uh, you know, after talking with the creative director, I know they got, you know, plans in mind to expand the shoe range, which is great. I look forward to seeing how they improve. Again, the shoes are new for them. Uh, you know, they're mainly a clothing brand, so it'd be interesting to see how they evolve in the shoe realm as they've done a great job evolving in the clothing line and uh, are getting more and more popular as you start to pay attention to Instagram people. So a little quick details, the company is based out of Canada. So if you are in the US, beware of import duties. I must stress this because being a brand owner myself, I know how surprised people get when they get hit with a bill. Uh, do, do know that as far as I know, as of today, what is it? May 12, 2021, you can import up to 800 US dollars without paying taxation, but above that, they start to hit you. So beware of your total uh, cart value, and if necessary, make two orders in two separate shipments. Anyway, uh, 250, great shoe. I like the last. It'd be nice if it was a little more trim on the sides, but you know, again, that, then you start getting into that bench grade realm. But I think the shape is, is lovely. It's a beautiful burnished brown. Um, it's a very simple, elegant shoe. Again, size was, was good when I tried this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it was a little bit roomy, just a touch, but not, it's, you know, it's kind of like my chisel last where you know, in order to make a chisel last with a good proportion, you gotta add some length and some, some volume there in the toe box or the proportions start to get out of whack. So the size and for all intents and purposes was good, uh, quite standard. And yeah, I, uh, I hope you enjoy. Definitely check out Spire and McKay. They are doing interesting things. They're growing by the week. I have a bunch of their clothes and I really enjoy them. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what more they do in the shoe realm as, uh, as, a, as if they start to do as interesting as they do in the clothes and we should only expect good things from them. Again, 249 bucks, check them out. If you're buying clothes and you're interested in the shoes, add one to your cart and give it a whirl. And yeah, for any questions, you know where to find me. If you enjoy these videos, please like, please subscribe. And if you really want to be generous, please share. I wish everybody a great day. Do stay tuned for more stuff. Um, I do want to mention, you know, as I built this, uh, as I built this reputation on this blog for being a shoe snob, right? In the beginning, I, I, I you know, I've, I've talked about cheaper brands. I've talked about expensive brands. And I went through a period of only talking about expensive brands as I was in London in the heart of it all. But, uh, you know, in today's world, in reality, there's not a ton of new expensive brands hitting the scene, uh, especially because right now we're in a difficult state, but there are more economic lines. And the goal really of the Shoe Snob blog is while being snobby is also just to see men wearing better shoes. So if I can get a guy f wearing Kenneth Cole crappy cemented shoes into a pair of $249 welted shoes by a brand that mainly sells clothes, I'm happy for that because they got out of garbage. They got out of trash. I can't expect to take the guy from Steve Madden, Kenneth Cole, Gatsiano, and Gerlin. It's stupid, it's unrealistic. So for those of you who think I'm selling out because I'm writing about and talking about lower end stuff, you gotta think about what my original goal was and that was to see everybody just wearing better shoes. And a $250 welted shoe is definitely better than anything cemented, I don't care what price point. So 
bear that in mind and stay tuned as I do have some very expensive shoes coming soon that you guys can all ooh and all over. Have a great day. Thanks for, st thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.